What's poppin' YouTube? Welcome back. We're here with actually the part two to Flesh That Hates. It's a long video, so I broke it up into two parts. And the first part I recorded quite a while back, and then I ended up, uh... Not recording the second part, I'm sorry, but here we are with it now. So let's get straight into it. More SCP content. Thank you for being so patient as I get back into SCP content. Um, Y'all are the best. Y'all are just so chill and so supportive, so I really appreciate that too. Anyways, let's get into it. Initial discovery of the tunnel entrances at Site A. The destruction caused by the rapid collapse of the Site C exploration attempt during SCP-610-L2 resulted in a series of unexpected events in Site A. As the strange spherical formation in Site C was burned and destroyed, the SCP-610 infected inhabiting Site A were recorded by aerial drones going into seizures and convulsions. Oh, that's cool because the they all seem like they're interconnected. The SCP-610 infected rapidly shriveled and died, along with all of the flesh material spread across inanimate objects within the village. I'm so the sorry for those of you guys who are watching live on Twitch. Because the people on YouTube, you could just go back and watch the uh, part one and be totally fine. But the part two would be like, what the fuck happened? Basically, um, for part one, it's like the, the smallest, simplest recap in the world. Motherfuckers pulled up to an SCP site. <laughs> and they're trying to like, not even pulled up. Like originally it was just like, like, they had like a few dudes on the outer edge. And then they got infected and pulled into like the whole mass they said that a little drone thingy, the drone thingy started observing them. And they realized that, like, SCP-610 actually has, like, its own culture sort of thing and communication going on. It was really interesting. And then they went towards, like, the well and towards, like, the whole, like, thing. I mean, it's, it's just, there was a whole lot. The first video I did was, like, an hour. <laughs> okay. But it's totally worth watching. Um, but we're still, at, like, we're talking about the infected sites. There's different sites that have been infected. We found that a lot of them are interconnected, which is really cool underground in the tunnels. And there was, like, an amalgamation of flesh together that was really gross. <laughs> and, yeah, that's, like, kind of the whole rundown. Mobile SCP-610 infected mm -hmm. who were able to regain their footing all proceeded to what appears to have formerly been an upper-class residence and entered the building. As the infected entered this dwelling, it suffered a foundational collapse, revealing the presence of a sinkhole beneath it. The size of the hole in relation to the structure above it posed an impossibility for an entire building to collapse, suggesting something within the hole applied force directly to the structure with the intent to pull it inside and expose the hole. The revealed hole is approximately large enough to accommodate three grown men standing shoulder to shoulder. Light sources applied by remote drones failed to penetrate further than four meters depth. I think I already heard this part. Hold on, let me go to my previous video. <laughs> the next field log is SCP-610-L4. Unmanned exploration of the Site A tunnels. Events regarding the discovery, research, and handling of SCP-610 rapidly degraded to a point where fail-safe options were being considered. For over one hour, nothing further had happened at Site A following the loss of the research teams during the seismic events in SCP-610-L3 and subsequent contact with previously unseen SCP-610 life forms. With the absence of activity at Site A, a remote drone dispatch was authorized in two parts. The first part would drop a remote relay device at the entrance to the Site A sinkhole and the second part would dispatch a drone into the hole directly to relay its data to the remote relay for transmission back to HQ. Uh -huh. Drones on site were powered by solar energy, with a battery maintaining a four-hour charge. Attached is the video log recovered from the site. I personally think that you should slap on some extra batteries. <laughs> sinkhole drone before its loss. Video feed activates. Researcher's face is seen looking into the camera, applying a polishing cloth to the lens. Quote, mm -mm -mm -mm. this is explorative drone clean, clean, clean. RSCP610-1 coming online. Systems check out, video confirmed, feed is good to relay station. We are testing rotors now and deploying if successful, end quote. The sound of the helicopter blade starts up <laughs> as video feed begins to lift in the air. Camera tilts left and right to test pan feed. Am I helping your immersion? I was being the helicopter propellers. To help your immersion. <laughs> then directs itself towards the site A sinkhole. Quote, video feed is go. Engines are go. Links are green. All right. 
sending drone down now, end quote. Audio from the outside world fades away as the camera angles itself down and peers into the darkness within the sinkhole. After approximately two minutes of descent, lights on the drone activate and illuminate a roughly <laughs> dug shaft. Initially, it is unclear what could have created the hole, but at a glance, it would appear that the shaft was created by a single event rather than dug over time. At 15 meters descent, there are traces of SCP-610 material attached to the dirt and stuck to rocks. Ew! The material is dormant, but it's goofy. retains its texture and appearance, Ew, unlike samples it's from and above goofy. ground level, which shrivel and dry. Oh, it's rapidly. shrivel and dry. There was a possible it's connection like jerky. with this material, and the events last recorded during SCP-610-L3. <laughs> Descent continues. At 100 meters in depth, branch tunnels become visible in the walls of the sinkhole. Panning of the camera reveals small tunnels branching out, apparently at random intervals, but which are not restricted to any one side of the hole. These tunnels are considered too small for any useful exploration to occur. Descent continues. It's like veins. Increase in density of SCP-610 materials on Earth walls veins. is noted as depth increases. At 250 meters, the bottom of the sinkhole becomes visible and the tunnel slopes sharply, suggesting a natural formation, which was already suspected. Drone video shifts to illuminate this tunnel and drone proceeds forward through the area. SCP-610 codes entirety of the tunnel now and care is taken to keep the drone from coming into contact with any surface. No Movement goops. is detected five meters ahead. Lights on the drone are dimmed and weapons come online. The RSC P610 drone is equipped with a 5.56 millimeter machine gun containing 50 rounds of ammunition. This is meant to be used to deter wildlife away from the drone and defend against aggression when possible, rather than to dispatch a target, although it is fully capable of handling human aggressors in small groups. Camera focus turns to the moving mass of flesh ahead. It's kind of it's kinda cool, because like, you know... Uh, we're really showing the guns are pretty taboo, but they're just like casual about it. They're like, yeah, we got, we got, I can take out a few humans if it, if it wants to. Shit. Three meters. After focus clears, the movement appears to be coming from what appears to be a deer, uninfected. Uninfected? In the grips of tendrils composed of SCP-610 material. Deer is being suspended above the ground with unclear intent. What? The drone has moved past the trapped deer while holding it in view of the camera until safely away. It's just vibing there. It just, it just, it just, it just. Oh. <laughs> like the deer, the deer's just trapped. It's just like, chilling. Nothing occurs with the deer, and the drone proceeds past, undisturbed. The previously fairly level. Ground I hate you. Fuck this chatter, bro. Is this is that an SCP? Why does it look demon foreskin? <laughs> I hate you, motherfuckers. Cause now I can't unsee it. <laughs> That's just demon foreskin to me now. I hate you, motherfuckers. What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> of the tunnels displays large humps in apparently <laughs> random placement. Five meters ahead of the drone, 30 meters past the encountered deer. Upon approach, these lumps turn out to be similar to the infected villagers who escaped from Site A Mama. into the sinkhole Mama, after Mama, the destruction Mama. of Site C. Mm -hmm. The sound of rushing water is now detected, and the drone is pushed forward. Oh. 100 meters further into the tunnel, the sound of running water is now deafening. Drone the lights hell? reveal a running stream of water, potentially from one of the adjacent rivers in the area. Oh. A sample vial is placed in the water, allowed to collect, and then released with an active tracking beacon. Later recovery of this sample indicates no SCP-610 contamination of groundwater. The tunnel splits in two at this point. <laughs> Shut up, chat. This is why it hates, because it's ugly demon foreskin. That's why it hates. I can't believe I didn't get circumcised as a child. This shit fucked up. 
<laughs> now I got a hoodie on my penis. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry, whenever I see an uncircumcised cock, I think it's just a hoodie. It's a hoodie on a dick. <laughs> oh, I'm good. <laughs> One tunnel leads around the river and then seems to slow down. The nods are crazy. <laughs> while the other is directly above the light source in the ceiling. The yeah, this my dick is trip shut up we're trying to watch a video i hate my chat i hate y'all motherfuckers i'm like try i'm here like oh shit they have like rushing water here okay so they think it's connected to a river they take a sample of them with a vial i look over at my chat my d my dick got drip <laughs> stupid stupid <laughs> selected to facilitate recovery of the drone during adjustment of the drone's flight path it comes in contact with a portion of the tunnel wall oh, put it fuck. in SCP-610, causing a deep gash from the propeller of the drone, oh, shit. which is already healing over. When oh. the camera focuses on the impact point, the drone proceeds upwards. 300 meters of upwards travel, taking approximately 45 minutes, results in the drone emerging into a windy section of mountain, where it is directed to stay low. Camera panning of the area reveals what may have once been a village, long since abandoned okay the precise look i'm real creeped out because like if you cut the inside of it is it gonna retaliate in some way because like oh shit location is unclear but it is assumed to be in the vicinity of site b you can't be a first time chatter who goes damn though my force can be secure and containing and protecting <laughs> you can't you're a first time chatter What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? That's the first message you send in chat? That's how you're gonna be known? <laughs> Cause you got SCP dick? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Judging from estimates in travel by the drone. I watched the uh, first half of this, not second half chat. Deceased layers of SCP-610 and unlike other buildings in site mm, A Sorry, one second. I need to go back. I was too busy laughing. Judging from estimates in travel by the drone, the buildings here are coated in deceased layers of SCP-610, mm. and unlike other buildings in Site A and Site C, which were coated in SCP-610, these buildings appear to be constructed directly from the tissue substance. Oh. After a cursory scan of Site B, it is determined there is no life here either natural or SCP-610 related. So the drone is directed back into the tunnel. As the winds around the area make aerial recovery impossible, upon descent into the tunnel, a deep roaring sound fills the Oh audio. no, oh no, the no, video no. The feed becomes choppy as something blocks the signal. Yeah. During periods in which connection to the drone is clearest, its camera and weapon are angled downward and propellers slow in speed to allow a faster drop. Video feed becomes entirely clear for the final <laughs> two minutes oh. before feed is lost. Okay. Rushing up toward the drone from the area below is what appears to be a large human face stretched to 20 times its proportions with no features save those created by the SCP-610 material. There are eye sockets, but no eyes, a mouth, but no teeth. The drone fires upon Oh, us. so which is my grandma? I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> rushing mass of SCP-610, but the bullets do not deter it. Impact points remaining visible for several seconds before closing over themselves. There is no room in the tunnel for the drone to take evasive action, and it is swallowed by the mass. Oh, SCP-610 so is considered lost until three hours later, when the feed inexplicably- But also deserved, bitch, because you slashed the inside of its gutturals. Even if it instantly healed, fuck you. Um, nom 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 nom. Returns. Video feed from the drone appears to show a series of structures illuminated by one of the two lights of the drone. The camera pans around without instructions from the remote relays or HQ, mm -hmm. capturing a vast number of shambling entities within the area. SCP-610 material moves over the lens of the drone, and video feed is permanently severed. Ugh. Manned exploration was approved. Could you imagine the sounds that shit makes? 
You know those ASMR motherfuckers who be licking their microphones? Oh, 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 oh. And they make all those squishy sounds in their mouths. It's like probably that though. <laughs> but with roaring. Rawr, in between. <laughs> Results are in field log SCP-610-L5. Manned exploration of the Site A tunnels. Approval from Central HQ was granted for a manned assault excursion into the tunnels beneath Site A to try to ascertain the extent of the SCP-610 infection. The destruction of Site A and Site C have established SCP-610 can be contained and destroyed, making the source of the infection top priority. The initial descent into the tunnels consists of five teams, two research and three assault, along with enough equipment to establish an underground base of operation. They're fucked. Can we all agree? Can we all agree? Y'all, y'all getting fucked. <laughs> y'all ain't making it. It's gonna take one stupid dickhead to get a little too drunk one night, drop a beer cap on on a piece of flesh, and it tears it open, and all of them get consumed. Operations. Descent into the tunnels was established using pulley systems and a lift to move equipment. Assault teams were the first to descend, armed with flame units, to clean SCP-610 out of the area. All teams were able to descend without incident, and flame units took point, providing an undisturbed journey toward the water source where the RSCP-610 drone was lost. Base camp for underground SCP-610 operations resides at the bottom of a three-way junction, four okay. if the water flow is included. Okay. The first pathway is that which led from Site A to Cavern HQ. The second is the pathway to the ruined village residing in the mountains above where RSCP-610 was destroyed by a large unknown SCP-610 entity. The third pathway heads west and seems to follow the flow of the water for an unknown distance. The cavern area here is quite large and is supported by a number of okay. rock formations I'm like just trying to get the visual in my head so I close my eyes SCP for a bit. Material. The state of this material suggests great age and appears to reinforce the structural supports. Whether or not this is intentional or coincidental mm -hmm. is unknown. The two research teams split activities between building Cavern HQ and collecting samples of SCP-610 in various states. No contagious <laughs> materials were detected within this area and the creature recorded by unmanned drones did not appear at any point to the Cavern staff. Of the four research teams, three were ordered to proceed down the unexplored pathway, while an aerial drone was prepped for a second recon of the vertical shaft. SCP-610 infection did not appear in the third pathway until approximately three kilometers. Wow! The serious infection did not appear until 16 kilometers in. Even after the lengths traveled by the assault teams, no SCP-610 infectious life forms were encountered and the fleshy material coating the cavern walls posed no threat to the team. The most significant reports at this time were the increasing thickness of the material, suggesting a source, and the complete lack of SCP-610 contamination in the water. As a test, a sample of SCP-610 was cut away from the cavern wall and placed in the flow of the water. It exhibited no unusual reactions, but was quickly swept away by the current. At 20 kilometers okay, in, so the leader of the assault teams requested a transport buggy to be dispatched to them. One was available at above ground HQ. However, oh. it would take time to move it to cavern HQ and then remote drive it to the teams. Oh, that'd be total a. That'd be the Rations total. provided to the assault teams were sufficient, so a camp was established while the buggy was moved and readied. Yeah. During this time, an aerial drone was also sent to explore the vertical shaft. The results that, yeah. of this exploration were placed on hold with the arrival of the buggy at Cavern HQ and ultimately concluded in document. The buggy was navigated to the assault team encampment with no events en route. However, upon arrival and preparation to continue the exploration, the assault teams came under attack by a number of large SCP-610 infected life forms that emerged from the area ahead of them. Sorry, I just want to read through something again. I'm just trying to reread something. One second. Oh. 
Oh, that's cool. Okay. I was just trying to see like which like which like tunnel or which way they're coming into like if, like to invade. Video recovered that's from the assault team before. cameras show them caught off guard as SCP-610 infected made no sound and were undetectable. On one film, for one to two seconds, it appears that some of the creatures are coming out of the SCP-610 materials on the wall. Oh shit! Not emerging from them so much as being created by the material and then breaking away to act independently. During this assault, an attempt it's to protect birthing. the buggy, members but were like lost creating. to the water currents. It's like Play-Doh! <laughs> it just fukunk off the wall and it's Play-Doh. And then it makes its own self into a little squishy bean. And then it goes over and goes, um, num, num, I'm a squishy bean. Contact with them <laughs> was lost. Contact was regained the dough that hates. and is recorded in SCP-610-L6. The remainder of the assault team now consisted of three members, armed with a single flame unit. Use of this unit to repel the assault proved you gotta need vital, more fire. as standard firearms did minimal damage to the infected creatures. These infected creatures show minimal traits to associate them with any known form of I life. just, I feel like, why not get all the ambitious flamethrowers? You feel me? Like, at some point, you want to be like, mm, well, based on our studies, flamethrowers fucking work. <laughs> so let's bring two dudes with guns and one flamethrower. What? Why not get them all flamethrowers? <laughs> like, why? Maybe one person with a gun. I think our gun to flamethrower ratio doesn't make sense. Two flamethrowers, one gun, or, like, all flamethrowers. Why do we go two guns, one flamethrower? I don't know, dog. In the region giving rise to the belief that they may have been spawned by the SCP-610 infection itself as a form of defense. No further casualties were suffered during the raid, and the remaining members managed to eliminate all attacking infected, allowing them to continue with exploration with added orders to attempt to locate lost team members. A further 20 kilometers into the tunnel, the river separated from the tunnel pathway, and the team was instructed to abandon the recovery order given the inability to navigate the water safely. A total time passed before the remaining assault team reached an end in the tunnel. At the okay. perimeter of the area, now known as Site B, the team came under assault again from a smaller number of SCP-610 oh, that were much larger in size. These infected appeared in the tunnel as if they were lying in wait for the approaching team. These creatures were dispatched using the flame unit although all fuel for the unit was expended in this act. The assault team was now limited to standard weapons and short range. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. See, I watch solo leveling and they get one bitch who just carries all their items that are heavy. I feel like we should have had a basic bitch who basically acts as a mule. And we just stack them with a bunch of flamethrower shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give them canisters and canisters of bullshit to carry. Why do we just, why do we go, mm, you know what I'm saying? Mm, I feel like we should have had more Personal resources. flame units. <laughs> A time lapse of five minutes is allowed to pass. Like, sure, you may have walked 20 kilometers. <laughs> but shit, it would have helped. <laughs> Before the team proceeds further into Site B, cautious of further assaults by SCP-610 infected, the tunnel widens out into what appears to have <clears throat> once been a village of intermediate age. The construction of the buildings in this area are primitive compared to the settlements at Site A and Site C, and are clearly of human construction. Many of the buildings rest at angles or slants, suggesting that they were disturbed <laughs> by a cave-in. Of interest is a building that appears to be a church with a working clock tower. Oh. This building is built oh. atop the remains of two older buildings that have fallen completely, and has a visibly stable foundation. Surrounding all structures in this area is a depression in the ground filled with a substance resembling a liquefied form of SCP-610 fleshy materials. The oh. pool moves as if acted upon by minute and unseen forces. Oh god! Outward from invisible contact points. <laughs> okay, in this is why I could never be a part of this shit. Because the moment I see that flesh pit of oozing goop, um, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hesitation. It's not even attacking. It's not even doing nothing. Uh-uh. <laughs> ...from unfelt winds. The team avoids this pool at all times, 
and proceeds through the ruins what? slowly on stable foundations where possible, making the church their target area. Within the church are pews. Are they praying in there? Expected. However, there are only four, one of them shattered, when the building could accommodate as many as 20. The three intact pews were arranged in a 2-1 formation a two facing formation. a pulpit. Okay. There is no trace of dust on any surface. The entire area appearing to be immaculately clean, given the location and believed age. Behind the pulpit is a hole in the floor exposing an area of the SCP-610 pool beneath the building. Could you imagine? One of the fleshy-ass dudes is just a clean freak. Listen, Jesus told me to clean on Sundays. <laughs> All right. It's pancake, it's pancake Sundays. If you think I'm not going to clean these damn pews, you're wrong. <laughs> no eyes, no mouth, nothing. Just cleaning. <laughs> you got a problem, bitch? Let me go back to my ooze. <laughs> the church in ruins appear to be uninhabited, and exploration of the church proper is uneventful until the clock tower bell tolls. This tolling triggers a shudder in the building, followed by human screams from the ceiling. Lights shone upon the ceiling reveal a large mass of SCP-610, from which descend a series of six wooden circles. Strapped to each circle oh. is a living human, coated oh. entirely from neck to toe oh. in SCP-610, but having an exposed head, which appears uninfected. I'm gonna be so real with you, Shawty. That kind of goes hard as a, like an ornament or decoration. Like, you want a creative chandelier? That's it. <laughs> right? Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> These human captives scream as the bell continues to toll and the circles... And they make music? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's so dark. <laughs> the team begins to move toward one to investigate when an unknown creature cries from outside the building, prompting them to take cover in the shadows near the pulpit. The light sources are extinguished, pitching the entire area into darkness. Night vision is left off to avoid revealing the team's location. The sounds continue to emit from outside of the church, drawing closer but lower than the frantic screams of the captive humans. At least one noticed the team, as the captive humans often call out to be saved. From the entrance to the church, a candle lights on the side of the doorway, then one on the other side. A figure is seen holding a small torch and moving back and forth between a series of candles to light the doorway. The flame is then applied to a rope coated in SCP-610, which quickly ignites and spreads up to a peculiar chandelier system at the church entrance. The light from this system illuminates most of the crosses, but does not reach the team's hiding place. Those captives who appear in the light do not show standard signs of the beige-colored SCP-610 infection, but instead are wrapped in a red variant of it which shows signs of constant motion, rippling across itself in waves. Oh! From outside the church, a flood of SCP-610 infected shamble quickly into the area. Ignoring oh, that's so gross! Oh, it's so gross! I'm sorry! Oh, it's so gross! Oh, it's gross! <laughs> sorry, they were getting... They get, oh! <laughs> <laughs> like maybe if they did it, it just, it just, uh, just uh, the vibrant color of the flesh and their heads being like, <laughs> you know, like, uh. candles, and stands in the middle of the room. They proceed to the captives on the wooden circles. Kill them, please, just kill the them. Red SCP-610 masses, resulting in further screams and cries. From what can be gathered from the return video feed. The red SCP-610 seems to be connected to the captives and is using them as a source of sustenance that it then uses to grow and feed the normal SCP-610 infected. Whoa! Overly zealous infected tear at the red mass too hard, which results in pulling skin and tissue from the human captive beneath. Oh. This exposed area is quickly covered over by the red mass, which then grows in size. Feeding like this continues for approximately six minutes at which time, the candle-bearing figure sounds a gong, and all infected entities move to the pews. There are several more creatures than seats, 
but none moved past the frontmost pews. The figure who sounded the bell. I kind of love how they like. It's cool because like the first part sets up that like yeah they have like their own kind of culture and their own kind of mannerisms and weird way of communicating. And, like they kind of give us all these like little like hints leading towards stuff like this, and you find out in these underground tunnels like oh they actually have like a structured form of religion based in their own growth, right? Of their hive basically, which is just I don't know I think it's really cool. Does not move spontaneously collapsing as if made from hollow clay from the pulpit area activity is noticed as a pillar of scp 610 flesh rises through the hole and extends directing itself toward the gathered creatures no sound is heard and no motion is recorded once the pillar stops moving the silent period persists for 10 minutes without even the human captives making a sound having fallen silent at an unknown point. The pillar of SCP-610 retracts back into the hole it emerged from without any warning, prompting the departure of the infected from the building. The candles remain lit, and the team emerges after all infected appear to leave the area. The descended captives remain at ground level as well, all screaming, seeming to have ceased, but still showing signs of life with heavy breathing and movement. Upon departure from the church, camera feeds from all three- If we decapitated them and left, do you think that it would stop growing? Because technically it's like using that to create, to like, as like an essential life force and shit. If we just like beheaded those sacrifices, like those ones that are being fed off of, maybe we have a chance. Became erratic. Camera one ceases transmitting completely. Camera two shoots straight up into the air for several meters. Camera 3 captures the member with Camera 2 being flung by a tendril that emerges out of the ground itself, swinging them out of sight onto the other side of the ruins. Camera 1's feet is restored and displays Camera 3's owner running briefly in the direction of the lost team member, only to turn and run back as SCP-610 infected pour from between buildings. Combat ensues between the two members and the onrushing infected using assault rifles and personal flame units successfully driving back enough of the horde to make an escape towards the buggy. Oh shit! Passing by a building. Camera One's owner is ambushed by a figure resembling the figure who is in the church lighting candles, wielding a large crop scythe. Camera Three's oh, okay, owner that's fucking continues cool. <laughs> without pause towards the buggy location. Oh, it can turn into a However, reaper. The buggy is found half absorbed oh. by the SCP-610 mass oh. covering the floor. While turning to find another way of escape, Camera 3's owner turns to find the same figure with the scythe approaching, weapon raised. Two shots are fired, and the camera feed ends. Damn. <laughs> Imagine being like, <clears throat> yes, we held them off, we made it out, and our buggy is fucked. And Jim just got slashed by the scythe man. And now the scythe man is coming for me. <laughs> like, holy Five shit. Five hours later, while final decisions were underway to decide how to contain or eradicate the SCP-610 threat, time delayed video feed from the lost team members who fell into the underground river currents was established, has been filed in SCP-610-L6. As I said at the start of this lecture, SCP-610-L6 has been redacted and is only viewable by Class A personnel or higher. Thank you very much for listening, and that concludes today's lecture. Thank you. Thank you! <laughs> oh man, the way it built to that though, I loved that. Like basically our first half video was like all about like our part one video was all about like understanding their culture and like their like their interconnected ways and like us learning about their barriers and the villages themselves. And then when it came to the like second half of what we did now, it's like, oh cool, now that we understand all those systems, let's get into like the creepy ass shit. Right? And I'm like, holy smokes. That was dope. That was dope. I'm glad I broke it up into two parts. It's sad that I didn't record them closer to each other, but you know, at the same time, I do the best that I can. I'm glad to bring SCP stuff back to the channel. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't be a dickhead. So subscribe. Check out the original video linked in the description below because I love the Vulcans channel. Like the reading, 
the way that he brings in other people sometimes. It's just so great. It's so great. Anyways, check out the original in the description and also stick around for this channel. Catch you later. Bye.